it's the next level. I am so going to enjoy killing you someday. Lila, darling, would you give us a minute, please? Yes, the grown-ups need to talk. What is it you want? Do you like jazz, boy? I'd rather lick a cheese grater. Mm -hmm. Jazz, like a beautiful woman. Complex, emotional, hard to please. She doesn't just give it to you. She makes you work for it. I'm really hoping that you're going somewhere with this. Under my leadership, the commission would sound more like jazz. And what about the board of directors? Well, that's where you come in. Nope. No, it isn't. In exchange for the assassination of the board, I'm willing to get you and your family out of this timeline and back to 2019, where you belong. Hey, panelers. Welcome to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week, we're going to be covering Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 6, A Light Supper. And <laughs> I don't think it was a light supper because it was I don't think anybody place. ate anything, actually. <laughs> I think drinks were thrown around like, more I think, than anything. Yeah, I think they, there were drinks and a, and a uh, uh, what do they call that thing on the table was destroyed. The fruit thing on the table was destroyed. So... <laughs> What do they call that? Centerpiece. Centerpiece. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word centerpiece. The centerpiece of the table was exploded by Vanya. Or so, an appetizer. Or, it might have been an appetizer, yeah. It might have been either either one, but I don't think they I don't think anybody actually ate anything. So. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty funny though, in that respect in that scene. But yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, with with the synopsis on this one, it's Allison gives Ray a peek at her powers. Dave visits Klaus's compound. The handler offers five a deal again. Really, he, she's constantly <laughs> offering him deals, and then the siblings meet their father for dinner. That's and pretty accurate. It synopsis. is pretty much. It's straightforward. You know, it, it's like basically straight three sentences. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the some of these synopsis have been spoilery, and this one's not really spoilery. So at least that's good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I know. Uh, that over there on Strange Indeed, Rima has has said that they're not. She's not reading synopsis anymore because prior to watching the episode, because it just gives too much away. So. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things happen where you read it and you're like, oh man. But then you would think that people would have watched the show. The show's been out for a while, and I'm sure that. Rima oh yeah, watch sure. the show before she actually podcasts. Yeah. Oh yeah, it. I'm sure there's lots of people that have binged it already, and even people that are sending in feedback have already binged it. You know, so yeah, we're not getting any feedback, but no, I checked this week. We <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it, it's all dependent. I I've noticed that, and I've interacted with a few of our listeners, and they stated to me that they're not the type to send in feedback. You know. But uh, you know, occasionally and that's we'll get. Fine. Yeah, we occasionally get feedback from our friends. Yeah, which is yeah, cool. no, no, I, and by no means do I want to discourage anyone. I would love, I no. we love hearing from our listeners. We love hearing from our friends. We love hearing from our friends who listen and everything. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, if you guys feel the need to send in feedback, do so. You know, don't be shy about it. But if you don't, you just like to listen, like I know a lot of you are, then do so. That's fine. I'm I'm happy with it. We just have fun doing this. That's the whole yeah. point. So, with that, we should really get into our top fives. Absolutely. I wonder if it's too late to be unadopted. Why don't you start? All right, my number five would be seeing Allison's entry into the 1960s and being embraced by the ladies of the salon. You know, she she made her way to get there where she is currently at by being herself without using her powers. Mm -hmm. So, we got to see that whole story unfold about Allison and when she first showed up and then brought in by these women into that salon and being embraced and then and you know that history was amazing and the fact that 
she winds up meeting Ray within it, within the salon. And that was her salvation. Well, right. you know, she was all alone. Ray gets her to start talking again. I, I think she was just holding back due to the cut that she got with, you know, from last season. You know, at the very mm -hmm. end, Vanya cuts her throat. She yeah. has no voice. Just to recap about that. And then on top of that, you know, she's still trying to find herself within that time. Yeah. But she also needs somebody, and Ray gave her that. And he gave her basically the strength to move on and to live, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a great scene of her, you know, running from and it's so subtle that we realize that the the line, the racial lines, racial barrier lines, whatever you want to say, are are very close together because she literally runs from one side of town to the other side of town. You know, she gets chased by those those white guys into the salon and yeah immediately there's like three three, three of these three white guy racists uh and suddenly they're faced by however many were there half a dozen or ten uh black people who are like waving scissors at them and and telling and you know you suddenly get that moment of where the white guys are like okay do we do something or do we leave and they just they just kind of leave i thought that was great yeah yeah it it, it was a nice look at that time and where they were at within those times too yeah you know, it, it's something for us to realize and understand, uh, especially what's going on around nowadays. And I understand from that point of view from my friends, but, you know, you, you don't know it unless you experience it. And a lot of people experience it even still to this day. Absolutely. But, but you know, it, it was it was a, a good thing to see and yeah. also an educational thing to see. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so my number five is just – it's just a quick one about, about Klaus, and I wonder if Klaus realizes that he changed the timeline. Um, <laughs> it was very quick and very subtle of what we saw in there, but when, when Dave – and I know we talked a little bit about this, that I, we were kind of confused about Dave's enlistment – uh, and him saying that he'd already enlisted, and mm -hmm. then we get the actual story here. We find out that he was supposed to enlist on November 22nd, mm -hmm. the day that, that uh, Kennedy was shot. But due to Klaus interfering there at the diner, his uncle takes him to the recruitment office earlier Correct. than in that original mm -hmm. timeline. So it's it's an interesting thought of maybe things have changed dramatically in in just a short time and so that that original timeline that timeline we saw in episode one may not still be happening it's it's a it's a conundrum it's a time travel paradox conundrum uh that, <laughs> an alternate uh, timeline at this point i'd say yeah, yeah yeah exactly and so it's it's interesting to see what uh what's going to happen the rest of the season i'm excited for it and uh, can't wait to to see how things wrap up yeah same here that was part of my part uh my number two but I'll add on to that. It was it was really nice and cool to see that Klaus was giving him the information. Oh, your favorite mm -hmm. book is Dune. He goes, what is – I, I yeah. never heard of it. And, <laughs> and it's like, oh, you will, and you're welcome. <laughs> and he throws yeah. the bottle. Yeah. And and he, he knows that, you know, it's like, oh, you just eat a plain burger with pickles. Well, that's not anything new and yeah. it's kind of average. And then he starts going into other things just to show that he knows who he is and that they know each other and they've been together before. And, you know, that's I, – I think he got across to Dave at that point. And on the fact that, yes, I, I think you and I speculated about this before where I said it's like, you know, he – he had already enlisted. Remember, we had a conversation. Right, we had that conversation about about delayed enlistment and, and yes. whether whether yeah. whether November twenty second is the actual day that he left or not. But here we get we get it clear. It's confirmation. That yeah, it's confirmation because Klaus says, "No, wait, you weren't supposed to until November twenty second. And even though Dave doesn't pick up on the fact that Klaus was predicting his future, mm -hmm. Dave confirms that. Well, yeah, I was gonna do it next week. But because of this, I did it now. And so we've, we've effectively changed the situation. So it's, it's almost like there's a, there's a glimmer of hope that maybe when the siblings or if the siblings get back to 2019, is Dave going to still be alive? Is the knowledge of, of, what he, of what's going to happen to him, does it change 
we'll have to just see if it yeah. changes his relationship with Klaus. If it changes his uh, his time in the army. If it changes his death, we'll have to find we'll have to find out and see. Because I absolutely love that line, and it's something that it's it's not we don't really talk about it a lot today because there's been so much anti government and and kind of anti military kind of stuff, mm-hmm. but. When when Klaus tells him that you're you're going to die in war, Dave says, "Well, that's kind of why we do why we do it." And it's or and that's not exactly what he says, but it's it's a it's a thing for just about every veteran I've known. It's an unsaid it, word stating, "Yes, I am yeah, dying for my country. I'm putting I, my I life remember, there." Yes. Yeah, I remember years ago before I retired, one of the things that they that they talked about uh, with veterans was they said that we. We took an oath and we basically signed a check to the United States of America saying, I will give my life if I have to. Yes. And, and that's, and that's really what, what we had done for, and, and so as a veteran, I appreciate what, what he said. And I hope other veterans can appreciate that, that patriotism. Cause I know when, when I joined in 1989, it wasn't a super popular thing, but then yeah. we saw a lot of kids join after nine eleven. We saw a lot of of that kind of stuff, and well, now even that's, during that's, the Gulf War itself, like in even yeah, like the first in the early nineties, we saw yes. some. Yeah, 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 right before right, that was right Storm. after. Yeah, Desert Storm, Desert Storm, right after I joined, I joined, uh, uh, joined in. So it's 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 going to be interesting to see if this does change the timeline enough. Or 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 what happens uh, here down the line, or if it ever comes up again, I, I I hope we see Dave some more. I hope he comes back again. I have a funny um, feeling we probably won't see him the rest of the season. To some maybe degree. not, maybe but not. But maybe next season. You yeah. never know. You know, Klaus might eventually meet up or see him or happen upon him. Yeah, like I said, I, I I'm I'm wondering if what's going to happen towards the end of the season, if they change, if they're able to change things. If we'll find out, and then maybe next season, like you said, he'll turn up uh, being well. Yeah. You know, I, I did something different than what I was going to do that would have got me killed, or we'll, we'll see. So, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping for that and hoping for the best of it. Yeah. I, so, did we, did we get to your number four, or are we? No, still... no, no. I just kind of tagged on with right, the still part on of my number, number two. Right, yeah. Right. So, yeah, my number four would be Diego Stand. Stating that there are no numbers anymore in the family, I guess. You know, it's like you're not number three, you're not number two, and you're not number one. It's it's all just Team Zero. <laughs> I, I think it's his way of saying that they are just family and that they all stand together with you know this one, this whole situation. Yeah, and and uh, you know trying to get to Hargreaves <laughs> and stop this situation. You know, yeah. now that Vanya is not crazy psychotic, <laughs> killing yeah. it was, spree. It was, actually, it was actually pretty funny the way that whole conversation went because, you know, Luther's the one who actually says, um, she calls, she uh, Allison calls Diego number two, and mm-hmm. Luther's like, no, there's not numbers anymore. We're team zero. And then she kind of looks confused, and Diego goes off on his whole, his whole spiel about, uh, no numbers and all this again, like he did last last episode, and then yeah. uh, Luther again. Luther's like, um, you don't have the shell, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he snatches it away from Allison and throws it off into a corner somewhere, and we yeah. hear it smash. I, it was it's just a hilarious kind of scene to where where I just loved how confused Allison was when Luther's like, no, no, we're Team Zero, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh. Uh, so my number four is that whole the whole Allison and Ray thing. We speculated at the end of last uh, last episode what was what was going to happen uh, when she told him the truth, and you know we kind of see how she kind of shows Ray how using her power can kind of take a, a dark turn. But there was also something interesting going on, and, and maybe it was uh, maybe it was just a, a misstep by the the writers, or maybe it was just to show us how her power works. That when she's talking to the manager in the diner, she only says, "I heard a rumor once." She just says, "I heard a rumor that you served us," mm-hmm. and then from then on, she doesn't use those words anymore. But yet, he is so in her thrall. Uh, that he he pours the coffee in the cup and she you know she just says coffee black and he goes and gets it and she keeps saying more more and he's overfilling the cup and Ray is trying to get her to stop and then it's not until hmm. she looks away from him that he stops pouring the coffee and and runs over to put put his hand under cold water and that burn looked bad oh yeah it was 
you know, so it was really interesting to see how powerful she was. And then, of course, when they get back to the house and Ray starts questioning her, my, you know, my heart just broke when he asked her, did you use your power on me? And she told him no. But then he says, well, if you had, would I even know it? And it mm. just, we don't see the rest of that scene. All we see the next thing is Allison there joining with the others at the the restaurant mm -hmm. but yeah it broke my heart to see that and, and i hope these two characters can skate stay together but it's uh it's it's not looking good it's for, hard when it comes it, to it that it seems like yeah. yeah it seems like every time she's in a positive relationship it goes awry because of her powers you know yes yeah her, well her, look with her daughter well that's it, what i'm saying like in it's, then, it's, it's yeah yeah it's horrible because in you know, in, in season one, she lost her relationship with her husband and her daughter because she had used her powers. Mm -hmm. Here, she loses – she might – we don't. I don't know for sure. She might lose her relationship because she didn't use her powers. Correct. You know, yeah. and she can't – there's no way she can convince him that she didn't use her powers on him. So – Yeah, and I, I have a little thing to add on to that with Allison using her powers when you say – I think the – I heard a rumor is pretty much a trigger to her power – and mm -hmm. everything else is subject to her mental thoughts. And Could anything be. she says after that just becomes, like, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, in it's, that way, an aspect of, like, an influence verbally. Yeah, I, I think it's it's kind of like with with uh, a little bit from Jessica Jones. With, yes, uh, Kilgrave. With his, Kilgrave's power, yes. you know, whereas his, though, was... Any was, word or anything he says just Right, is he didn't even power. have to preface Correct. it. He, yeah, he just he just had that power of suggest. And so I think you're right. It's probably partly that once she gets them in her, in that suggestive mode, she can basically say anything to them until she chooses to break mm. the connection. So. Correct, yeah. It's once they're in that thrall through that mm -hmm. first uh sentence just to get them engaged and yeah. that's it and then they're whatever she needs until she breaks it herself exactly yeah, that that makes sense uh so we're on to my number three you're number three yes uh well i really like that lila is in love with diego come on you you saw that during the bingo game with the handler you know mm -hmm. the handler is basically poking her about it and you could tell she has feelings for diego it was a funny scene yeah plus you know the handler won <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought this was my number three as well and i just thought the whole scene was was hilarious uh and but it was also really really good that we keep getting these kind of one-on-one -on -one scenes between the handler and lila yeah uh, that i think is is really great that they reveal so much about the characters, but they also reveal some stuff about the story as well. Like this is where the handler tells her that you have to have a scapegoat. If you're going to do a, yes. coup, you, a coup, you have to have a scapegoat. And, and then she, she, and she basically figures out, like you said, that uh, Lila's in love with Diego. And even though Lila's trying to deny it, you can definitely see that there, it, the attraction is there for sure. Um, and so that's, uh, I've got some more about that later when we get to notes. But yeah, that was my number three as well. Just how excited she got about winning, and I just <laughs> when she slaps the table and she curses at everybody, and they just kind of all gasp and look at her, and it's, it's like, like, oh great, this lady won. Oh no, it's like, yeah, it's like she got this in this subtle, this so much enjoyment out of it that I thought it was it was uh, it was pretty funny. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of quirky, like uh, when we watch Preacher and the certain mm -hmm. characters in that as well. Too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Well, my number two would be Ben being able to get into Klaus. Um, mm. I already spoke about the other half of my number two, but, you know, we get to see him jump into Klaus at, mm -hmm. at certain points. But then again, he does it at the dinner with Hargreaves. He, yeah. he needs to, like, say something. He just jumps into him, possesses him for a moment, just a moment. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. Yeah, it was very, you know, like Ghost, like the movie Ghost with Patrick yep. Swayze where he jumps inside of somebody and uh, except it, it seemed like there was definitely they both kind of fell out and uh, and it, I'm assuming that no one was able to hear him when he said I'm Ben or nobody was able to pick up on or it. Or understand it. Yeah, yeah or understand it because he was being so uh, – he was slurring and everything. So um, that's unfortunate because, again, we're stuck with this whole – I still don't know, and I hope we get some sort of ex explanation of this, of why 
Klaus is not telling them that Ben is there. I think this is going to be ongoing for a while. <laughs> it just mean, it just doesn't make any. It, it just it, it's one of those things that just it's really bugging me. And just about I was listening again. I'll, I'll give another plug for Strange Indeed. Their coverage of it. It's like every this is the big question that everybody has is why is why is Klaus not telling the others yeah, about he keeps Ben? It. <laughs> and and. Uh, somebody, one of their uh, uh, listeners, gave a, a feedback about the fact that didn't five didn't he see Ben in that first episode when he was in the future? He saw Ben fighting, so he should know that Ben is there. But you know, it's it's that was such a quick scene that he got before Hazel popped him out of there. Yeah, that who knows if he actually did see Ben fighting or did or knew it was Ben. Uh, there's there's a whole lot to that, but I I definitely this is this is one of those those you know kind of C plot questions of the season that uh, I hope it gets worked out by the end of it. So where does that bring us to your number two? You did your number two. I did my so, number so my two. so my number two. Correct. Uh, my number two is just it's uh, Reginald Hargreaves and uh, that whole scene in the restaurant. We've talked about it a, a little bit, but it revealed a lot about him that he had the resources because he talks about that he checked up on all of them. He knew everything about them. Obviously, he had found where they all were, which I think is really interesting because he didn't even know about Vanya. Didn't he? I, did he even? I don't even think. No, I don't think we even I, you know, saw I, anything. I don't she know never how reached he knew. Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so how did he know even to find Vanya? Unless uh, they they tracked five when he went to go look for her, or mm, yeah, maybe I I don't know. It's just it's one of those things that I thought found interesting because you know Sissy shows up at the end because the envelope came to the house. You know, yeah. Um, and, and, and Reginald Hargreaves is such a mysterious person, mm -hmm. though. We still don't know much about him. Yeah, you yeah, know? and and that's what we're saying. So I, I'm, I'm, it was, it was interesting that we get this idea that he's definitely got some reach. He's got some pull. Yeah, uh, he's got these strings. I, I loved how they went around the table, all kind of, kind of explaining their powers. And he was like, "Well, I, I have to see evidence of <laughs> yes, him." Yes. And uh, and so the the first thing is Diego throws the knife, and it curves in the air mm -hmm. and misses Hargreaves, and Hargreaves taunts him like, "You're zero for two. Yep. And and then Diego tries to attack him, and he sees five teleport, and he's like, "Oh, that's interesting." And uh, and then. What was it? Five says uh, uh, Klaus can commune with the dead, and he says that Luther has super strength. He says that Allison can make people do anything by what she says, and and then Diego jokes, "Well, she never uses it." And she says, "I heard a rumor you punched yourself in the face." face and, and he punches. <laughs> so Hargreaves gets to see gets to see that work. And then Vanya and, actually does the uh, utmost yeah, thing. She, she, she taps. They're like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Yeah, don't, and, don't do Vanya's because hers, <laughs> hers could destroy the world. And she, oh, I've got control over it. She taps the glass. Yeah, and, which is it, – it's really cool because you know now, now now that she has control over her powers. Right, right. But it still is a little shaky because she blows up that fruit. And I'm sure she didn't mean to just blow up the fruit. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. she meant to do something different there. But, uh, but yeah, so it's uh, – and then Luther, you know, taking his shirt off. And go, you did this to me, you know. Was, oh yeah, you uh, stood up to him, yeah. You know, and it was just one of those things I thought was was interesting. And Diego kind of gets back his stuttering, yes, because because he's kind of. And this is this is where it kind of takes a, a dark turn, even though it's a callback, kind of season to one, mm -hmm. uh, as we see Diego and his stuttering coming back. And then uh, I didn't realize it until the third time I watched it, but. Is Grace – has she been setting out in the car the whole time? Yes. Like like yeah. he came yeah. to the restaurant and told her, hey, wait Just here. i got to go here. take care yeah. of something. Exactly. And went inside. I'm like, seriously? He, he was left probably her? like – I'll be 15 minutes and then yeah. like an hour later he's back. Hey, how yeah. are you doing? Yeah, and Diego's <laughs> knocking on her window and she's like, are you following us? Yeah, um, I had that in my so notes and then the fact that Diego actually – questions her about Hargreaves mm -hmm. uh, and how right. Reginald you know is and then she he, she's like he's not a bad man and then yeah he goes I think you're wrong and just yeah. basically gives her a little bit of information just to watch out for her yeah he shows now, her the picture and but you know there's no the thing about showing her the picture and saying what the picture means, means exactly. doesn't really tell her anything because she doesn't have any proof that that's what that picture well she my, knows that it's Hargreaves but yeah you know yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And my question is, is this going to disrupt the timeline as it is with her? Yeah, Maybe, who knows? You know, why did she disappear after a while? Again, we don't know that. We and we, we maybe only know that, that changes she's... that, and maybe that's something for season three that we don't know. Yeah, like like you know, we only all we know is that at some point after this, she is no longer around, and when Hargreaves needs a nanny, he builds that robot in her likeness. Yeah, you know, so uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I love and I love the little conversation. I've got a, a quote from it in my when we get to the quote section between Five and Hargreaves, kind of at the bar where five is just trying to convince him to help them out and he's just like no i'm not gonna do anything and i just that whole that whole back and forth and then i love that hargreaves says the same thing about time traveling that he said in season one mm. when he was scolding five when they were when they were kids Correct. and he was telling you know five not to do it but except this hargreaves kind of gives him some advice and says well start with seconds Small. Yeah, not not you know. Start with seconds. Literally, minutes, it's almost like then... baby steps. He's mm -hmm. just like saying, "Hey, just yeah. take baby steps in this. Don't jump. He's like, don't take a giant leap. Yeah, take small steps." And I love, I love that five says, "I don't have the time for that." And, <laughs> I Meanwhile, and I, and I'm thinking you're talking about time I'm traveling. <laughs> what, you know, get it through your thick skull. You've got all the time in the world, and you know. I hope I'm going to go back to our conversation a couple episodes ago. If they do the Bill and Ted thing with this, I'm going to be so disappointed in the writers if they're like, "Well, this happens because I went back in time and did this, and yeah, I must yeah. have remembered to go back in time and do, do this, this because this. it happened." I you I know, think that would be way too much for them to do, and I. That would take too much writing and too much time. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think they'll do that. I, I think with Five is always he's so impulsive, and that's why he thinks he doesn't have the time for it. Yeah. I just want it now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with learning how to do this. I need yeah. to have it to work now. And that is interesting that, that you say that, that character, that part of Five's character, because the song that's playing, you know, as they go to the restaurant is this is what you want, this is what you get. You know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. So uh, that's an interesting take on his character. Yeah. Well, that would lead me to my number one, which you pretty much summed up all over. <laughs> <laughs> I just love what Hargreaves though states to five when they're having, uh, it looks like scotch or whiskey or something at mm -hmm. the bar, and he he goes, "Wow, you've been more helpful to me than you were when I was younger." And he goes, "No skin off my teeth, old man." Right. Meaning acknowledging him as an older man because five br brings that up to mm -hmm. stating goes, I'm older than you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got that quote in my notes. So when we get there, when we get yeah. to the quotes, I've got that down there. Yeah. That's really, it's, it's really interesting that this version of Hargreaves is, is almost, I mean, he's still a jerk and he's still a kind of a bad bad guy to his, yeah, he's his children but uh <laughs> but yeah I, this this is a, a different hargreaves and what we're going to see in the future uh my number one is just that, that a lot of this episode was setting us up for the rest of the season i think and for the the next episode and it was it was so this was i think i say this every week this was so difficult not to go on to the next episode because <laughs> there literally is everything because diego gives grace the picture Correct, Vanya and yeah. sissy they they go off and we see that her husband is kind of watching them elliot being tortured by the swedes ah oh, and that bloody message that's left on the floor that i did look and see that it is the title of the next episode that bloody message that was left on the floor yep is the title of, of the next episode and then of course five showing up at the handler's room and accepting her deal and getting the little card telling him when the the, the board is going to meet so yeah just a lot of setup for the rest of the season and we've got you know four episodes left seven eight nine ten so we, there's still a lot of story left to tell but uh, we're definitely coming to the climax oh definitely yeah it, it, it's pretty funny yeah and to say that you know it's hard not to binge or anything to me as soon mm -hmm. as I started, it's like a roller coaster ride. You just don't want to stop until you get yeah. off, you know. But then again, you know, it actually helps me because my memory is always terrible. Mm -hmm. I could remember certain things after a while because my memory is very short. Yeah, this came out, how, what, a month and a half ago, two months ago. And basically, you know, I brushed through it and within, like, what, two or three days. And then I do the rewatch and there's things that I pick up that mm – -hmm. I haven't picked up before on yeah. little nuances yeah. and, uh, and a couple of watches as we do this helps me out too. 
So it, it's a good thing when you do stuff like that because there are yeah. certain things you just don't pick up on the first watch. Exactly, exactly. So we've got some notes here that we haven't covered yet. Sure. Yeah, the the handler coming to the Swedes in the sauna. You know, basically she's setting something up for some sort of long-term plans, but I, I think really deep down it, she just really wants Diego gone. She wants... She doesn't like that relationship between Lila and Diego at yeah. this point. Yeah, and I had that in my notes that you were right. I think that I think you were the one last week who called it. You said that the, the whole reason why she's she's making them focus on Diego is because she wants to get rid of him because of the the influence he's having on on Lila or Lila's romantic relationship. So uh, give that uh, thumbs up to you there. Yeah, she figured that one out. I think all of mine we've talked about. Uh, we talked about, well, we didn't really, I didn't say this, but Luther's still eating, but he, nobody ate anything at the light supper. Yeah, he'll be always be eating. <laughs> the only thing I, that we haven't really talked about is I absolutely loved, and it, I noticed it the last two times I watched it, that uh, Ben's reaction when Klaus comes clean to his cult about being a fraud, and all of them are like, I am a fraud, I am a fraud. Yeah. And he just walks away, <laughs> shaking his head, going, I tried, man. And Ben just, like, Ben just can't believe, it. like, everything this guy does just works out for him. And uh, it's Regardless like, if, <laughs> even if he's just being honest, it's like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to be like, yeah, uh, uh, hi, I'm an alcoholic. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> All right. We are... uh, so we've got some quotes as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I should start off with the first one because I just started it. You did. Uh, Klaus saying, hi, I'm Klaus. I'm an alka. Whoops, wrong group. <laughs> and his confusion of where he is and what was just – that was just after Ben attacked him for saying he was – was an altruistic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my first one is just uh, the the five at the beginning when he's when he's talking to the handler and he's still got his foot on Lila's neck and he says, you know, planting her in a psych ward, taking advantage of my simpleton brother, that was smart. <laughs> so kind of giving her a compliment at the same time while he's almost killing her daughter. Yeah. Uh, the last one I would have would be the handler saying, do you like jazz five? <laughs> and five's like, I'd rather lick a cheese grater. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the only the last two that I picked up that I really liked is that after Dave apologizes to him, Klaus says it's good for the ego to take a punch every now and then. I say, <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. And then of course uh, I alluded to it earlier when Hargreaves and Five go to the bar to have their their little drink. Hargreaves says, you seem to be the sensible one of the bunch. And Five replies, well, that's because I'm the oldest. You know, technically, I'm older than you right now. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, actually, we don't really know how old Hargreaves is. We do no. know. I mean. He still looks old then in his 60s. Yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> as old as he did. but And so it's still not clear what his age is. But it, it's still, I thought that was, that was a, a great. Uh, Maybe he's alien. <laughs> that, well, I, I mean, I think that's what was alluded to in that last. I didn't get a chance to go back and rewatch uh, the opening, uh, the cold open of, of episode 10 of season one. But that's what it's alluded to, I thought, was that Hargreaves was kind of an alien on an alien world when he's there with his wife and he releases those lights into the sky. But, you know, we'll see. So we don't have no feedback. So why don't you give us some comic news? Sure. But before I get into that, I... I just want to say that yeah, the the one aspect of the episode that really bothered me, mm. Elliot. <laughs> oh, that was that was yeah, sad. I really that was, was so hoping... sad. That was like a sad moment, and yeah, uh, you know, cheers to Elliot. You know, I wish he <laughs> maybe, was around. Maybe longer. he's still alive. <laughs> we don't know, but I'm yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, sure he he's was dead. dead. Come on, he had something in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. I forget. Yeah, he's he's probably dead. Yeah. He's gone. Um, he's yeah. dead. Poor Sorry. Elliot. <laughs> Poor Elliot. So with comic news, well, uh, a lot's come out. So a lot of people have been uh, testing positive for COVID-19. Robert Pattinson has tested positive and has paused the production of the Batman movie now for uh, at least a couple or a few weeks. So they have people being quarantined. The Rock came out as well. So him and his family tested positive and he did a big announcement on Twitter uh, and then uh, Merle himself had come out and stated that from The Walking Dead, Michael Rooker, he tested positive, but he showed 
on his Instagram and his Twitter and his Facebook that, you know, he's negative now. So a lot of people are getting hit hard with this that are in the industry and it's affecting the industry of filming and everything else. And they're all doing their best to take care of themselves so that we are entertained. So I'm just glad that they caught it and they're taking care of it. And I just want everybody else out there to be safe as well. So that that's the only new that's some of the news that I have. That's that's the only darker news, everybody. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, the next part would be the Walking Dead comic will be available in color on October 7th. And it will be called The Walking Dead Deluxe. And it will be monthly, like the original comic. So unlike the original comic, which was black and white when you opened the comic book and you saw every panel, it was black and white. Now there'll be all colored panel inserts. So if you have a pull list and you're interested in The Walking Dead or you love The Walking Dead or you never got into it when it came out, get the Deluxe series when it comes out and get it weekly. You know, if you want to spend that three bucks a month or four dollars, depending on what they put it up for. So me, I intend on to get it myself, but, you know, it, it's kind of weird because that'll be just rereading a story I've read already. But it'd be interesting to see it in color at this point. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. So uh, the last part would be The Boys Season 2 came out on Thursday instead of Friday. But apparently they are releasing episodes every Friday now. So we got a sneak peek on Thursday, even though they said, hey, it's coming out on Friday, but you got it on Thursday. So, and Steve, you said that they were going to be planning to put one episode a week. Yeah, that's, they're, they're, they did, they did the first, they dropped the first three this weekend, like you said, on Thursday. Um, and then they're going to go weekly starting the 11th. They'll be weekly um until if I've got it calculated out, the last episode will drop October 9th. I think that's what I saw on, uh, depending on how they do it. So cool. Yeah. That's, it's, it's really interesting. Cause if you listeners remember when the boys first came out last year, or last season, they just dropped the whole season out and everybody just binged it like crazy. Like you would do on Netflix. Yeah. So you had all your, maybe it has to do with something with visual effects and things of that nature yeah or maybe they just wanted to try something different who knows could be that could be just the you know with new content they they want to be keeping new content coming out constantly instead of dropping just a whole yeah it might be a change once, so might be a game changer yeah who knows we'll when see. cobra kai comes out and you know eventually yeah. in 2021 for season three and then you know, maybe yeah. well, I'm weekly. sure. I mean, they might not, but I'm sure Netflix will do will do what they've always done. Just drop uh, it all at once. Yeah, <laughs> drop it all at once because that's that's the Netflix's kind of thing. You know, uh, both Hulu and Amazon have done both. They've done weekly and dropping a whole season and stuff. Hmm. So interesting um, with their original content, or maybe Hulu did it week to week. And yeah, I guess Amazon has been dropped. This is this will be the first time Amazon. Is, try is something one. different yeah yeah trying something different but i would i would be surprised if if netflix doesn't drop the whole the whole season three at once but Same we'll here. see you never know yeah the only podcast recommendation that i have is we already talked a little bit about it was that tv podcast industries has started their coverage of the boys season two they have uh, dropped i believe they've dropped all the first two episodes of their podcast review mm-hmm and they will uh, uh and if you go on there our listeners too they have a pub quiz which is pretty cool so if yeah you... i don't are they doing the pub quiz for this yeah for yeah boys? i actually looked at it i'm like oh man okay. i watched all three but yeah oh. i'm gonna have to, <laughs> like, I'm gonna I jump could, on there and, i didn't and catch try to something see so yeah, yeah it's fun to work with those guys because they they're really up to date they get their stuff sooner and i think it's because they are a legacy style podcast. They've been around a long time and they're based in the UK in that area, I think in Ireland, England, Scotland. And they, they've been doing this for years. So they have a little, you know, extra incentive because they, I think they get their episodes yeah, they, early. They've gone over 500. <laughs> they've gone over 500 episodes now with all of their different shows they've done. Yeah. So. Those guys are great. So they, that's all I've got. TV podcast industries this week. Yep. Uh, I only have a couple house podcast guys. They are doing Cobra Kai season two now. So listen to Rima, Jason and Richard with their views of the episodes of season two. Check out house podcastica. And the last one would be run for your lives on the Pyrocore entertainment network. 
Their second episode has come out, and they are covering Cloverfield, the movie. So that's uh, that's my network that I have. And keep in mind, listeners, Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network. So there will be something else later I'll talk and, and talk about regarding what's going on with Pyrocore. And for YouTube recommendations, I would say the Grim Life Collective, as always, with Michael and Jessica, as they continue to do their Up All Night with the Grims. Uh, that way it gives you something to watch and interact and have fun with friends online through YouTube, plus their original content. So they have been building and creating more content for their YouTube when they go and travel to filming locations and things macabre in history. So they like to go to certain things that have happened. I've mentioned it before, Leonard Skinner's crash site, the uh, the graves, things of that nature. They're interesting. They're fun. They're good people. Very cool. Yeah. So as always, you can send your feedback to us. Uh, we we are on just about every podcast player of choice you can think of. Uh, I usually forget to say Pod Chaser. I don't even know what that one is. But there's all <laughs> a lot of them out there. You can find us. Just search for Panels to Pixels Podcast and uh, give us a listen. Uh, our, check out our website at Panels to Pixels Podcast dot com. Also, our Facebook group is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The T.O. is spelled out right there in the middle. And the number one at gmail.com. You can call us and leave a voicemail or just call us and leave us whatever uh, at 845 350 2095. Again, that's 845 845- 3502095 and to the telemarketers that keep trying to call us to give us cars insurance on our cars please stop <laughs> okay yeah i've heard those it's pretty funny <laughs> we're also on youtube under panels to pixels podcast go there you can subscribe give us a thumbs up and uh, just uh, whatever whatever chance you have to give us a, a, a rating that would be lovely and uh, send us the feedback any of your feedback for the umbrella academy season two uh, if you've already watched the whole thing just go ahead and mark it with whatever episode you're sending to us next week we will be covering season two episode eight which is oga for oga i'm probably saying that wrong it's got the little umlaut thing the the, the yeah. two spots above the oh i don't know what that means yeah but that's uh, next week's episode and uh, uh we'll be talking about that next week yeah, definitely and where else can listeners hear us well i can be found right here on panels of pixels as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that i love that my friends do you can also hear me on a new podcast that we'll be releasing in a couple of weeks called Adrenaline Cinema, and that will be on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. The podcast will be based upon action-adventure films, pure action films, and anything to do that gets your adrenaline going while watching a movie. You know, those particular movies that get you going, that you love, that, that puts you on your seat. And like I stated before, Panels to Pixels will remain on the Next Level Podcast Network. Stay tuned to here. And we will keep you up to date or just check out our Pirate Core Entertainment website. And the way that is, is it's Pirate Core is spelled C-O-R-P-S and it's entertainment.com. So if you go there, you could check out Run For Your Lives podcast. There's a link to that, to their particular website. And you could actually listen to their particular episodes on there. And the same thing will happen for Adrenaline Cinema as well. So keep in touch, listen. If you have any feedback regarding that, you could always send it here or you could send it to Pyrocore Entertainment. And as always, I send various voicemails to various other podcasts and things, and uh, you'll hear my voice pop up uh, on the shows that I love. Awesome. Well, that's our show for this evening. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.